you can go to many different places of huge historic significance around the world. Some of them you'd have to travel a long way to get to, spend a lot of money. Right on our doorstep is a place that is as significant as many of them. Yet we might not recognize it as such because there's not much here. An old stone seat, a dead bit of tree. Most places where we like to think historic things happened, there's something to show for it. A monument, a fine sculpture, an open square, something to say something big happened here. Of course, if you were talking about the history of the abolition of the slave trade, you could go to different places. You could go and see Wilberforce's monument in his hometown in, in Hull. You could go to his tomb in Westminster Abbey and see a fine inscription and a, an exciting looking sculpture. You could look through the, the archives of the Houses of Parliament and uh, get the flavour and the feel of the passion of the debates and see where the vote was finally won. Consider some of the portraits of the leading characters of the day. Here, there's none of that. It's just some open countryside. But perhaps it was here that was the most significant thing of all in the story happened. Not where the debate was won, not where a slave was ever freed or a chain ever broken, but where one man took it upon himself to make a difference. Wilberforce was a young man who had everything going for him. He was born to one of the wealthiest families in England. He'd had no cause to earn a living at any point of his life. He had great skills as an orator and was attractive in all sorts of different ways. He had friends in high places. He had uh, significant power and influence. He had one of the safest parliamentary seats in the country. And yet he was depressed about what his life really consisted of. He was concerned that his advantages shouldn't be wasted. And so he thought about how he ought to devote his time and his energy. He thought about the, the reformation of manners. He was one of the founder members of the, the RSPCA, the Church Missionary Society. Um, yet he was a man inclined to some fits of depression. It was when he was on a, a visit to France that he was finally convinced by an old teacher of his that to give his life to Jesus Christ was the best thing that he could do to make it count for something, to make it meaningful, and to make it real. And so not long after that, he was here visiting his friend, uh, William Pitt, who lived on an estate nearby, and Pitt challenged him, knowing his skills and knowing what difference he could make to the ongoing debate. Pitt said, why don't you give your life and your time, your effort and your energy to the abolition of the slave trade? He knew it was something Wilberforce felt strongly about. As a young boy of only 12 years old, he'd written a letter to his local newspaper. But in between times when he was at university and afterwards, he had spent his time drinking and gambling and uh, engaged in frivolous behavior of all different types, as was befitting men of his class and station of his age. But it was on that meeting here by this old oak tree that Wilberforce said, yes, that was what he would do convinced by his newfound, newly acquired, newly inspiring faith, he said yes to Pitt's suggestion and resolved, in the words that are inscribed on the bench from his diary, to bring before Parliament an act to end the slave trade. is so significant. It isn't the place where the bill was passed. It, isn't, it wasn't the scene of great celebration. It was a place of personal resolve. A place where one man took an act of will to make a difference. So when I come here, it's a good place to remember this was where famous people did amazing things. But it's a challenge also that amazing things begin with a personal act of decision.
with perhaps at the persuasion or suggestion of another, a friend, a family member, a colleague, a preacher, or anyone else, one person says, I will resolve to make a difference. I will determine to act upon what I believe and bring change. Now that change may come years later. It was 20 years after this meeting that, that ACT received Royal Ascent that we commemorate this weekend. Uh, all sorts of obstacles lay in the future. And yet it was here that the decision was taken, not on the floor of the House of Commons, not in the, the decision making corridors and power of the world, but here in one man's heart and mind, when he decided, as an act of simple faith, to do what he believed his God, as well as his Prime Minister, was calling him to do, to resolve to bring before Parliament an act to end the slave trade. When we make our decisions, our personal decisions, they have huge impact, we hope, Sometime down the line, different people will be affected by the things that we say, the things that we do. Yet the real important place is the quiet place, the simple place, the lonely place sometimes, where we determine what it is we are to do with our lives. What is it that we are resolving to achieve? And if we want to be remembered as someone like Wilberforce, who, in the name of God, freed thousands of people, millions of people, ended slavery, then perhaps we need to step up to the challenge of being people who resolve to do difficult things in the name of the one who calls us to do things in his name.